This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. University of Wisconsin health officials are sharing tips with parents on getting their kids ready for the clocks changing this week. While adults are more than happy to take the extra hour of sleep when the clocks fall back, young kids may have a harder time adjusting their internal clocks with the routine change. Officials are recommending that parents ease their kids into the time change by pushing back bedtime by 10 to 15 minutes each night for the rest of the week. The gradual change should help their internal clocks adjust better. Enrollment at the Universities of Wisconsin has seen a solid uptick this fall despite a significant drop in enrollment at branch campuses. Overall, UW campuses saw an increase of about 1.2% for the fall 2024 semester, equivalent to about 1,900 new students. UW-Madison has the largest enrollment as expected with nearly 52,000 students. UW-Milwaukee was second with about 22,000 and UW-Oshkosh was third with about 13,000. The enrollment increase marks the second straight year of growth at UW schools. Wisconsin State Superintendent Jill Underly is proposing free meals for Wisconsin students. Health and education officials say a lack of reliable access to food is a major barrier in learning, and one in four high school students across the state are dealing with food insecurity. The proposal would cost $294 million and is included in the Department of Public Instruction's budget proposal. The free meals would be available to all students regardless of their financial situations. The state legislature would need to approve the measure. A Dunn County nonprofit says it can't provide turkeys or hams for the holidays after a difficult year. According to a press release, Stepping Stones of Dunn County usually provides food insecure residents with the holiday dinner staples, but has struggled with increased costs and less government funding. Officials say the organization has needed to use half of its operating reserves this year just to continue providing its regular food assistance for residents. The nonprofit provides the service for more than 10 percent of Dunn County residents. The driver of the vehicle involved in a hit-and-run death in Altoona in 2022 has been sentenced to prison. According to court records, Brendan Barkovich of Eau Claire entered a guilty plea to charges of hit-and-run resulting in death, possessing cocaine, and bail jumping on Monday. He was sentenced to six months in prison and two years of probation. He must also undergo monthly drug tests and pay restitution to have the hit-and-run charges dismissed. Jonathan Peacock of Altoona was the pedestrian who was killed in the incident. The Dunn County Board has passed a pair of resolutions calling on the Wisconsin State Legislature to expand Medicaid coverage. Wisconsin is one of a handful of states that does not accept expanded Medicaid coverage, which would allow increased coverage for people living at up to 138 percent of the federal poverty line. Health officials Governor Tony Evers and Lieutenant Governor Sarah Rodriguez have also pointed to Medicaid expansion as something that could have saved the HSHS hospitals and Prevea clinics in the Chippewa Valley. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers and the Department of Transportation have announced nearly $140 million of funding for road projects. According to a press release, local governments will have received over $536 million of funding for road projects through the General Transportation Aids Program by the end of the year. The funding helps local governments cover the costs of construction and maintenance. The Evers administration has improved over 7,400 miles of road and over 1,700 bridges since 2019. With the election just days away, this year's race for the 3rd Congressional District in Wisconsin has become the most expensive in district history. According to campaign finance documents, Republican incumbent Derek Van Orden and Democratic challenger Rebecca Cook have raised nearly $12 million in total. Congressman Van Orden raised more with $6.6 million through mid-October. Cook raised about $5.3 million through the same point. Polling shows the district is one of the most competitive in the country. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers and the Department of Natural Resources have announced nearly $8 million in grant funding for 12 projects across the state. The funding was provided through the Knowles Nelson Stewardship Program, with grants going to organizations like local governments, nonprofits, and county forests. Among the funded projects are things like an ADA accessible boat launch facility in Ashland, the construction of new walking paths in Hillsborough, and the development of a riverfront trail and pavilion in Prescott. The criminal case against the teenager charged with killing 10-year-old Lily Peters in 2022 is set to move forward in Chippewa County Court. The case has seen significant delays due to an appeal over whether the teenager would be tried in adult court or juvenile court due to the seriousness of the offense. 
The teenager has not been identified and is charged with first-degree intentional homicide and sexual assault. Peters was reported missing the night of April 24, 2022, and her body was discovered in the woods in Chippewa Falls the next morning. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. A Brewers coach signs an extension. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports Baseball. The Brewers have renewed the contract of pitching coach Chris Hook. The 56-year-old Hook, who has worked his way up in the organization for 20 years, signed a multi-year extension with the team yesterday. He's credited with developing the team's young pitching talent. The Yankees won Game 4 of the World Series last night in New York, 11-4 over the Dodgers. Game 5 is tonight, Los Angeles leading three games to one. NBA, the Bucs are in Memphis. They face the Grizzlies tomorrow night on Halloween. The NFL trade trade deadline is coming up next Tuesday. Yesterday, the Packers signed linebacker Jamin Davis to their practice squad. Davis had been a first-round pick for Washington three years ago and was asked how familiar he is with the Packers. Ironically, I got a chance to watch him a little bit last year, and um, it's, it's crazy now that I might actually get opportunity to play for him. So, But um, currently, I'm just honestly soaking everything all in, and hopefully I can get to work and just watch as much film as possible. That's Packers linebacker Jamin Davis with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. And just like that, we say goodbye to Halloween films and look forward to the start of the holiday box office season, which is just a couple weeks away. The season will open with an anticipated bang as Amazon MGM Studios is set to release its $200 million Santa Claus caper film, Red Santa, starring Dwayne Johnson and Chris Evans. The film was set to go right to streaming, but tested so well with audiences, they're going theatrical. The film is estimated to make $36 million in its opening weekend. If you notice an uptick in original content in the next year, there is a reason. The six biggest global content companies are planning to spend almost 10% more than they did this year. That would be an increase to $126 billion geared toward new viewing options. Disney will lead the way, spending 9% more next year. Hopefully, it's not all on remakes and sequels. Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz are about to team up in a new film. Day Drinker, Yes, my fellow Wisconsinites, it is an awesome title. The film will tell the story of a cruise ship bartender, Depp, who befriends a mysterious day drinker played by Cruz, and they end up embroiled in a caper. This will be the fourth time Depp and Cruz grace the screen together after starring in Blow, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, and Murder on the Orient Express. If you love Squid Game, you might love the new spinoff, which will be an American version. Deadline reports that the project will be led by director David Fincher, whose credits include films like The Game and Seven. This will be the first spinoff of the Korean show. Season two of the original Squid Game premieres December 26th of this year on Netflix. Producers say the third and final season will also premiere sometime in 2025. Need more Nick Offerman in your TV viewing life? Yes, please. Variety reports Nick will join Elle Fanning and Michelle Pfeiffer in the new Apple TV show Margot's Got Money Troubles. Fanning plays a woman desperate for money who starts an OnlyFans site. Been there. Offerman plays her father, a retired pro wrestler, and Pfeiffer plays her mother, a Hooters waitress. The show is based on the Ruth Thorpe novel of the same name that was just recently released. The first season will offer eight episodes. In a recent interview with the Associated Press, Hugh Grant says he killed three people. Of course, he did so whimsically and with that adorable accent and toothy grin. Grant is trying to get people's attention to go see his new movie, Heretic, in which he plays a creepy character named Mr. Reed. Grant appears to be moving on from his rom-com roles and looking for darker parts. I'm not saying the 64-year-old actor actually killed three people, but saying you did so in an effort to promote a movie really is the perfect cover. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Wamba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Cloudy and breezy with scattered showers and thunderstorms likely today and falling temperatures too. We're going to drop into the mid to upper 50s by late afternoon. Rain and thunderstorms, 42 tonight. Showers, 50 tomorrow. We could get a half inch to an inch or more of rain by the time it winds down tomorrow night. I'm meteorologist Sean K. Temperature now 73. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WCFW.FM or the TAP.FM. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 